Wasserhoon Brewery is the love child of Christine and Aaron, longtime home brewers turned entrepreneurs in the Virginia Beach craft scene. Aaron came from a U.S. Navy position and Christine from a semiconductor manufacturing job. They both have a history with home brewing and through this they formed Wasserhoon. The location features outdoor seating, beach inspired decorations, and of course, a heavy handed influence on the German styles of beer that they produce. They also offer many food items that are all thematic to their breweries, such as puppy bites, dog bones, you get the idea. Pizza is also offered, and if you check Google reviews, people seem to really rave about it. Since they actually deliver pizza and beer to the area, we had one delivered to our hotel room along with a crowler, just to test how the process worked. And not only was payment super smooth, the pizza was one of the best we've had in a very long time, and the beer was just as cold and fresh as when we arrived on site. All right, enough beauty parlor chit chat. Let's talk about some German beer. Hey guys, back again with another brew review. We are Andy and Sandra, your hosts, and today we are at Wasserhund. This is a German-inspired brewery, very heavily influenced by all the German styles of beer that exist in the world today. Um, and today we are just on a quest to experience German German Style stuff. beers, yeah. So uh, we have here six beers. They also do flights of four here, and they do flights of eight. That's in the shape of a German shepherd's head. It looks really cool. Yeah, so part of their brand is German shepherd. So it's Wasserhund and then the head of a German shepherd. Yes, yeah, very cute. dog themed. Everything yeah. is dog themed, even down to the food that they serve here. Yeah. They have little puppy bites and uh, kibbles for yeah. children. And the, they're just named in kitschy little ways. It's pretty cute. The beers are also uh, cleverly named after dog y stuff. So let's uh, let's just start it off with the lightest beer that we had. Um, I think we have a Kolsch, right? No, it's a Pilsner. It's called Pilsner. A, the Purebred Pilsner. Got it. Purebred Pilsner. And it's this guy right here? Yep. Okay, let's take it in. It smells uh, bre slightly bready and uh, a little bit corny. Clean finish on that one. I'm getting, um, yeah, it's really crisp, it's really clean. That's good. Yeah, very true to the style. That's crisp, that's clean, that's ever so slightly sweet and light. Mm, I'm immediately gonna give this a four. Um, it's not like, it's not perfect, but it's damn good. It's close to being perfect. It's, it's really, really close. Good. Excellent nice. job. Excellent job there. Now, what's the ABV on this? I think it's 5.1. I'm I not 100%. Like so. I think it's like 5.1 or 5.2, 3, somewhere in that range. Yeah, it's light. So, the second one we've got today is uh, Hep, uh, to Hefeweizen? Yeah, it's a German Shepeweizen. Ooh, see, see? With the kitschy names. That's cute. Clever. Okay, you can go ahead and try this guy. Interesting known fact, uh, the Hefeweizen style originated in uh, Bavaria in 1516. Yeast wasn't discovered for another three centuries as being an applicable ingredient in beer. Yeah. Bet you didn't know that. Mm. That's actually a, a well done like Hefeweizen. That's really good. I'm getting, you know, the banana there, the clove. There's all the characteristic ingredients Nothing's overpowering, out. nothing's... It blends really well together. They're nailing these German styles so far. I'm gonna give this one a three and a half, um, only because I think the body could be a, bit, a little bit... Uh, a little bit more body, just, but just it's very much. vague. Just that much. Um, but overall, it's a well done heffa. Okay, so the third one we have here is called the Doggy Paddle, and it's an IPA, 6.7%. <laughs> and it is a West Coast style IPA. So we're gonna get a punch of bitterness here, supposedly, and some citrus notes as well. All right. So I'm getting the citrus on the nose immediately. Definitely getting that citrus, definitely hot forward beer. It's not overly bitter, it's no. smooth. And I think that's um, one of the things they were shooting for in this beer was even though it's considered a West Coast IPA, they didn't want it to be like a hop punch to your mouth. Yeah. So they kind of toned down the bitterness and it's definitely toned down. I was expecting a lot more punch to that. I was too. Because I mean, West Coast IPAs, they're, they're notorious they're, for yeah. just really being aggressively up front and forward. Um, 
with their hop character, but I, yeah, the, I mean, this one is, but it's just not, it's like a smoother. Yeah, it's like yeah. a traditional APA. The hop sort of lingers in the back of your, th in the back of your mouth a little bit. Which, which I would cool. expect yeah, out yeah, of a West Coast makes sense. IPA. It totally yeah. makes sense. It's not cloying. No, yeah, I in like any that. Way. That's good. That's good. I'm going to go give it a four. Four, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a four. Four. That's good. It's nice. I'm really, uh, this brewery is really quick kicking it. Yeah, with so far. Okay, guys, so now we have the fourth beer. It's called the Blue Collar Kova Lager, and it's a Hell's Munich Lager at 4.8%. It's a style that originated in Munich, Germany, and I think it was kind of brewed to kind of compete with the Czech pills. This is brewed by the workers for the workers. Freedom, man. Freedom. Man, again with the cleanliness. It just it's tastes a clean so beer. clean. That's really good. I'm getting that. I think it's the yeast that's coming through. Yeah. It's just really like really true to the style. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of lagers. It's because they're just they're just a bit too light on the taste palette. Everything's just mm. too light for me. I like a lighter beer if it's well done and, and it's got a balance to it. Uh, this one's a little bit on the light side, I think, for me. Yeah, it's um, a little on the light side. But it's still really tasty. That's the thing. It's still really good. Then again, we're coming off, we're coming off of an IPA. So yeah, I'm going to give this one three and a half. Yeah. It's, uh, it's above average. It's really well done. Really clean, really crisp. Yeah, that's clean. Uh, it's that's... well carbonated, too. It doesn't have too much or too little. It's got a little bit of a bite to it, but not too much, not too little. I think it's a well done lager, for sure. It's definitely yeah. well done. You can taste it's well done, but as far as personal preferences go, I think it's just a little too light now that I just love super heavy beers. So. Yep. I'm at a three and a half on it. What are you at? Three and a half as well. Cool. We're in agreement there. Great. Awesome. All right, so the next beer is a seasonal beer. Seasonal because it's an, it an Oktoberfest beer. Bring it on. You usually start seeing these beers come out late August nowadays. Obviously by September, you're just overloaded with Oktoberfests everywhere you go. Super. Looks great. It's that traditional kind of amber, light golden amber color. Again, silly clear. Very clear, very clean. Their clearing process must be just on point. Smells plenty. delicious. I'm getting a lot of malt. This should have a slightly coppery, malty body character to it when you smell it. Pretty much exactly what I'm getting. A little bit uh, less on the nose than I would than I would think. Yeah. The flavor's definitely there. A again, a little bit lighter in body than I thought it would be. But all those flavors are really well balanced in there. I'm getting a bit more hops than I thought I would. That's uh, malty. It's it is yeah. I'm, I'm getting the hops more now. It's uh it's 6.3 percent. So it's about there with uh, your typical Oktoberfest beers. It's a lighter kind of Oktoberfest. Yes, yeah. That's what I, that's what I think it is. Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit on the light side as far as an Oktoberfest in my opinion. I'm gonna just go out and let me give this one a four. Four, yeah. yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna say the same thing, a four. Yeah, that's good. I would drink that in the fall for sure. Definitely. I'm excited when sure. it comes out. Yeah, probably they're gonna sell a lot of that in the fall. Yeah. I would imagine. I think they already sell cans of it here. You can take like to-go cans already. Maybe we'll do that. The number six is called the Puppy Breath. It's an <laughs> IPA. It's a northeastern style, like hazy IPA. As you can see, it's unfiltered, it's super haze. Um, I just love the name of it, Puppy Breath. It's so cute. <laughs> she loves puppies. I just love doggos. Super citrusy. Mm. I'm getting all the juiciness out of a northeastern IPA that I should be. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they used like three pounds of hops in this one per barrel. That's a lot of hops. Which, yeah, it's, it seems like a lot. I'm getting I'm getting citrus and I'm getting notes of of mango, which is my, one of my favorite fruits. Oh yeah. I sm yeah I smell that citrus right away. And the mango smell is kind of sweet. It gives it that nice sweet tropical. Oh yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's definitely citrusy as hell. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really good. I think I know Sandra's score on this one. I think it's going to be a five straight out the gate. That's a five. Oh, Sandra's yeah, first five. top operating. So amazing. Well done, guys. I don't think that I've, I've given game. a beer a five yet. I don't think you have. I don't think yeah. you've ever given a beer a five. Maybe I'm a bit biased, though, because I do love the style of beer. And, you and know, when we, it's done well and done right, I'm going to give it a five. We have uh, had hazy IPAs in the past on Brewer Review, and you, you've never given one a five. No, I mean, maybe there's just 
something always there that's just ever so slightly missing, but this one's hitting everything. Everything that I want in my beer, it's hitting it. I'm gonna give it a four and a half. I honestly yeah. didn't expect that beer to come out of this brewery and be so good because everything is very German inspired. But then again, everything has been very, very top tier. This is a good spread of quality beer right here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm impressed. It's awesome to see a brewery that is just kicking ass with doing these, these kinds of styles. Yeah, it just shows their versatility and traditional German style beers, which are difficult to make. And then what's currently in the industry right now. Wasserhund, we can tell that you put time and a lot of effort into these beers, and it shows. It does. Um, these are excellent beers, and anybody coming to this area would be amiss to, to not come here and try everything. Yeah, definitely. All of my friends um, Super before clean. we came here were like, oh, Wasserhund is awesome, Wasserhund yeah. is great, Wasserhund this, Wasserhund that. And it turns out, you know what? They were dead on. Yeah, they a lot right. of people recommended this place to come here, and now we know why, because the quality is just there. And we have to give a big shout out to the actual brewery staff themselves, which let us come back here in the brew room and film near the barrels. Super cool, you guys, man. Yeah. All right, guys, well, that does it for us. We're on to another brew review. Thank you to the folks at Wasserhoon for letting us come out and shoot. You guys have been super gracious, and we really appreciate it. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell button to get notified when new videos come out every week. Thanks again, and cheers. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to Brew Review. Andy and Sandra, your hosts, back again. I look and smell amazing. <laughs> welcome back to Brew Review. Your hosts, Andy and Sandra, back again with another one. I am very sunburned. Yeah. Okay. What? I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay. Hey, okay, ready? Hey guys, back again with another brew review. Your hope. Hey guys, back again. Hey guys, another. <laughs> okay, ready? But I fuck a lot of things up. Hey guys, back again with another brew review. This week we are at Foster. Do you ever ask Siri a question and expect like a correct answer? It doesn't, doesn't happen. Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back again with another brew review. We are... What is tying you up? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's fine. It, it'll be fine. Everything is fine. Everything is good. I, 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 am, I am the master of my domain. All right, that's it for... <laughs> I don't know. It feels... It feels weird. Hey guys, welcome back to another brew review. We are... We're your host, Andy and Sandra. Suck it. <laughs> and hit the bell button to get notified when new videos come out. Hey guys, welcome back to another brew review. We are your hosts, Andy and Sandra, and we are... Oh, God. Okay, do you want me to say it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. Eventually, I'll get it. Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back again with another brew review. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> wait. One more time. I'm gonna wait for this plane. Wow. There's so many jets. It's craziness here. All right, guys, that does it for us at Wasser. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. Just, just for brevity's sake. All right, guys, so well, that's it for us today at Brew Review. Uh, you can see my idiocy at work. <laughs> From the side of my eye. Hell vlogger. All right, guys, well, that does it for another Brew Review. All right, guys, that does it for another Brew Review. I forgot to send these same things. No, that's it. All right, guys, well, that does it for another brew review. We're gonna wrap it up here. Thanks so much for like. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> we got 30 minutes to get it right. I already said that. No, you didn't. I didn't?